blaming the media more rather than these black sheep. The black sheep are going to be in every community, and I even speak against the black sheep in many of my lectures. But the media is supposed to portray a picture which is true. They can't pick up black sheep and portray as though they are exemplary Muslim. Or they should say, okay, this Muslim has robbed. He is only one or five or ten amongst one billion Muslims. I have got no problem. But they portray as though every Muslim is doing something wrong. If one Muslim is caught in drugs. as the majority of the muslims deal in drugs so this is what the media portrays is wrong which are object to the media should portray a fair picture that's what i want hope that answers the question yes brother dr zakir naik congratulations and best of luck uh, for starting peace tv i request all the audience to give him a big clap my question is why is it imperative to circumcise in islam the brother posed the question is it imperative is it compulsory to circumcise in islam is it fard whether it's not fard in islam it is a sunnah a sunnat e muqada highly recommended sunnah it is mustahab it is mustahab in islam to circumcise it's not a fard but there are various reasons for that i being a medical doctor we can give a talk only on why circumcision should be done but it's a question and answer time i'll just give you a few points today science tells us that if a man is circumcised he has less chances of having carcinoma of the penis of having cancer of the penis less chances negligible chances if you're not circumcised there are chances there are various diseases which can be prevented if a man is circumcised in circumcision we cut the prepuce the foreskin of the organ of the penis and here we realize that where a normal person goes for the call of nature many after urinates there are droplets of the urine remaining in the prepuce in the foreskin this causes various diseases it can cause itching it can cause inflammation of the skin it can cause prepucite this many things so all the diseases are prevented if you circumcise and beyond that when we go for the call of nature we even put water which prevents it further a person today science tells us he enjoys his sexual life more if he circumcise than non circumcise furthermore the chances of various other irritation of the skin is not there if you are circumcised today latest research tells us that a man who circumcise has less chances of having aids the virus of aids can spread faster if you are not circumcised there are various list of diseases which are prevented that's the reason today in america more than 50% of the boys after they are born they are circumcised they are muslim even the christians in america the doctor asks the parents do you want your son to be circumcised and more than 50% of them are circumcised not because islam says that because they know it is a benefit for the son hope that answers the question yes brother so akum my name is imran mohammed i'm an it manager My question is regarding the media and conspiracy theories. Um how should the muslim respond to conspiracy theories such as America's trying to take over the world, take suppressing Islam, etc, etc. All too often I'm finding muslims uh, who are not educated in Islam correctly dive into the conspiracy theories more than the the knowledge that we should be acquiring. How should the muslim respond to the see conspiracy theories? The brother has asked the question that how should a muslim respond to the conspiracy theory by the american that set up against islam and we don't have our own knowledge what should we do brother the first thing we should do is we should know our deen unfortunately most of the muslim do not know their own religion that's the reason we have this problem if we know deen very well this media would not have a chance to say what it's saying unfortunately we ourselves don't know our deen and that's the reason when the media says many things we muslim become apologetic we tend to agree i'll just give an example there was a very good pious muslim mashallah he comes and tells me the brother zakir do you know these talibans they are very ruthless people bad people i said why what happened because they beat the women and who told you i saw it with my own eyes where did you see it he saw it on bbc See, I am not here to defend the Taliban. They are not my friends. Neither are they my enemies. I haven't met them. 
I'm not to defend them. But when I keep on traveling, I meet people. I was in Malaysia giving a talk, and there was a couple. Both of them were doctors. They were the gynecologist and a pediatrician. Both of them were doctors. They spent more than a month in Afghanistan trying to help the injured people. And that lady doctor, she told me the shot they show on the television, a Taliban hitting the woman. They aren't Taliban. I said, how do you know? I said, see, because I've been with the Taliban. I know how they tie the turban. For example, we as non-Arabs, we will not find a difference between the way the ghatra is tied of the Arabs. But Arab knows that the way an Emirati ties the ghatra is different. The way a Saudi ties the ghatra is different. The way a Kuwaiti ties is different. They know, we don't know. So she being with Taliban, she knows that the way the turban is tied in that shot, it can't be a Taliban. So even the shooting they did in Hollywood, where they did, I don't know, they didn't do a good job. <laughs> the media can change anything. For example, if I ask you that, how is George Bush? Is he good or bad? You will say he's not good. For example, I will chop off the knot and it will sound George Bush is good. When I show you your own recording, you say, oh, by slip of the tongue, I said he's good. Actually, you didn't say that. You said he's not good. I chopped off the knot. I'll show you, see, this is, brother, you have said he's good. So you will say, okay, it was slip of the, it wasn't slip of the tongue. You wanted to say he's not good. I chopped off the knot and it sounds like he's good. So this is the media plays games. So we as Muslims, what we should do, that we should know our religion very well. We should know our deen very well. And when anyone replies, we should not be swayed by how they portray Islam. And to judge Islam, we should go to the authentic sources, the Quran and the Sai Hadith. We should not look at what Muslims do or what the Muslim society does. To judge Islam, I'm not going to judge Islam by what the people in India are doing or Pakistan or Taliban or Saudi. I'm going to judge Islam based on authentic sources, the Quran and the Sai Hadith. So this strategy we use. And when the media portrays something, we should know how to turn the tables over. See, now the person won't ask two questions. He only asked one question. Why? Because my first answer only was the thing he didn't expect. He didn't expect me to say that I'm proud of my country. He thought I will say I'm not proud of my country. I'm really proud of my country, not that I'm telling a lie. I'm proud of India. And that is a battlefield where a mujahid, jihad, jihad means striving. <laughs> you know, by my name, Nayak, in Sanskrit, Nayak means a warrior, a hero. So by name, I'm a mujahid. <laughs> I have to be in the battlefield. I have to do my job. Therefore, I want to live in Bombay. People said, come here, come there. People are giving me they're giving me offers to stay in different countries. Your life is in danger. I have to be in the battlefield. That's my battlefield. I love my country for many reasons. For many reasons. Alhamdulillah. And I'm proud of that. So therefore, a Muslim should be trained in the media when they reply to turn the tables over. Hope that answers the question. <laughs> yes, sister. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Nayak. Since I'm in the media, I think this is a very relevant question which at times has come across our mind. I'm the editor of a trade journal in Dubai. This is pertaining to actually the Al-Qaeda organization and Osama bin Laden. Uh, all of us know that when he was fighting the Russians and he was fighting communism and what they did in Afghanistan, he was the hero of the masses. Now, many years down the line, this particular hero has turned into a monster. We are all aware of that. Now, my particular statement is this. Journalism is supposed to be objective. It is just supposed to see, uh, report what you see. You're not supposed to infer anything. You're not supposed to come to any conclusion while reporting. And here, the Western media, they created the rules and they're breaking the rules. This is exactly what is happening. And the thrust of your lecture or for all these, uh, during these two, three hours was exactly the same. They changed the rules and play with the rules. How can we as Muslims, as peace-loving Muslims, draw the attention of the world to this thing which is happening. Like, for example, let me give you something. All the ills of the world, all the violence is blamed on Al-Qaeda, and we have heads of state giving irresponsible statements like such and such a thing, it's by Al-Qaeda. How do you think, as peace-loving Muslims, we counteract something which we see as which is not 
I'm again talking about the rules of journalism. There is inference, there is uh, opinion. Th these things should be separate, but they are being mixed in the news and being given to us. They are being dished out on a platter to, uh, for the world exactly to believe what they believe and that Islam is a terrorist religion. Do we have some certain hadith or do we have some guidelines to show us the road and to show us the path as the to what to do now? She asked a very good question. She's in the field of journalism and she said that previously Osama bin Laden when he fought with Russia, he was a hero and Osama bin Laden was created by the Americans and later on when he goes against the Americans, he is called as a terrorist and as she rightly said in the rules of journalism, they have to report objectively and they should not give the opinion 